Hey there, amplifiers. One of the best ways that you can accelerate your progress is to avoid taking the scenic route. There are other experts who have learned the pitfalls, the shortcuts, and you can accelerate your progress simply by following those who've walked that path. If there are a few steps ahead of you, then they can help you. They can help you be more focused. They can help you see your blind spot. They can help you achieve more profitability. And we must humble ourselves and get out of our own way and know that we can't do everything. We can't be the master of all. Our guest today is really professional when it comes to helping others not only become more profitable, but also just more successful overall in their business. What I really like about our guest is she's not only um, focusing on one framework that is transformational, she has multiple frameworks to help guide her clients into achieving success. Uh, so I would like to welcome Growth Amplifiers, the Profit First Coach for Interior Designers, Andrea Russell. Andrea, thanks for being here today. Hello, thank you for having me. And we're, we're talking about Profit First, and if you've been watching and listening to Growth Amplifiers, you may know that Profit First is a framework uh, for professionals to keep more of their money um, from the book by Michael McAllowitz. But maybe some people are familiar with the pumpkin plan and maybe some people aren't. Would you mind sharing for those who are tuning in a little bit more about the pumpkin plan? Yes. Well, the pumpkin plan is exactly what Mike says. It is a simple strategy to grow your business in any field. And what I like about the pumpkin plan is it helps you to determine, for example, what that special seed is, right? Mike always talks about having uh, to grow a big ton pumpkin, you actually have to have a special seed, which clearly means that if you're going to grow your business in the, using the same methodology, then you have to have the special kind of clients, right, to help you grow that business. And so pumpkin plan is all about letting you know what those ideal clients are for you. What do you need to do that's different that makes you stand out from the other persons in your field, which is one of the areas that many people struggle with kind of standing out. And so profit, I'm sorry, pumpkin plant actually goes in depth into that process of helping you to stand out in your market, know who your ideal clients are. And Mike always talks about pruning, you know, when you have plants and you're pruning, you want to get rid of those pumpkins that's just causing you to cringe. And so he talks really, really a lot about that in the pumpkin plan. And so the pumpkin plan is that program that if it's done correctly, is going to help you to find your ideal client, find that one seed that you need in order to grow that giant pumpkin or the giant business. That is what the pumpkin plan is all about. That is super awesome. I, I really like that concept. And that's one of the things when I first heard about the pumpkin plan, I'm like, what in the world is this? Mm -hmm. And reading about how that's how you really grow the big pumpkin is you've, you've got to cut off the ones that are taking the resources. Mm -hmm. So you continually prune away things that are taking your resources, just like in businesses. If you have clients that are not your ideal clients mm -hmm. and they're taking your time and your energy, um, what tends to happen is we, we tend to grease the squeaky wheel Yep. And the clients that um, maybe aren't appreciative of the value that you're providing are taking more mm -hmm. time and energy, mm -hmm. and taking away from you providing the value to the ones that ultimately should be pro yeah. giving you your best service. Mm -hmm. That's right. So for yourself, how, how did you get started in this whole world of being, being such a professional and a guide to coach others to be more successful? Um. Honestly, I started this many years ago, a like couple of decades. I'm not going to tell you how old I am if I say a couple of decades, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but I started out as um, an inventory control manager for a lot of years for a building supply company back in um, in the 80s, 90s, I think it was. Um, and that's where it all started, working in that environment of inventory control and purchasing and logistics. And as I got more 
involved in it, um, a client of of the customer, the company that I worked for, mm-hmm. a vendor actually came into my office one day and he looked at my computer and he says, what are you doing? And I'm sa- I said, well, I'm setting up a purchase order to send to you. And he said, you want to come work for me? And I thought he was kidding. And I something happened that week and it kind of pushed the nail a little bit and I sent him my resume and I came over, he interviewed me and he hired me on the spot. The thing is, I came to do purchasing logistics, but that's not what I did. When I came, they were they brought me from what you call a public company, public traded company on software to this mm-hmm. company family on where we've got spreadsheets. It's, oh my gosh. I now have to go back to spreadsheets from working on software. So I implemented an accounting software in their company. And before I knew it, I was in charge of the whole um, accounting team. And as a result, I went back to get my master's in accounting. Um, and then I started doing all of the, um, what do you call advisory, right there, mm-hmm. right on the spot in that company. I started advising. And eventually, I started my own bookkeeping um, service. Um, and I had a client that had a big issue with not understanding that profit and loss statement. She just made money, but she couldn't see the money. And so that was about 2016 where I met Mike McCallowitz um, and read that book. And it was so simple. I was able to explain it to my customer. I mean, I've been to school for this stuff. I know this stuff, but they wasn't getting it. But Mike made it so simple. Um, And after communicating that to the client, um, I said, you know what? I think I want to do coach clients because I've been in the business world for so many years. I know how to start, run, buy inventory, price inventory. I know all that stuff. And so finally, I just branched out on my own fully in 2015. Um, And now this is what I do. I love helping people grow the business from the ground up. So that's what I do. (laughs) That is super awesome. And what I love about that is you, you felt that connection of, you know, there's, you can provide someone a service and there's nothing wrong if, if that's what you're doing. It's just mm-hmm. you know, providing someone a, a service, but when you can actually connect with someone and yeah. understand what they're aiming to accomplish and help mm-hmm. them break through to a new mm-hmm. level, mm-hmm. Uh, that's what juices me. That, those are the things that help amplifiers just fuel themselves and mm-hmm. continue to go and push forward even when you're on that entrepreneurial yeah. roller coaster. Mm-hmm. So then you've niched into the space of interior designers. How did you, how did you choose that? <laughs> what led you to that decision? I'm curious. Well, it's funny, you know, that you would ask that question because I always wondered that too. But <laughs> when I started my bookkeeping firm, my first client was my Actually, my second client. My second client was a home stage. She was a company who would stage homes for her business. Um, And what happened was, after introducing her to Profit First, she thought it was such a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. And she did Profit First in her business. So we implemented the Profit First in her business. And then my second client was a big um, designer in Miami. Oh, and so the second client was a, a designer. And then when I moved out on my own, eventually in my business in 2015, the very first client I got out of Georgia was a contractor. Mm. And then the other interesting part was after getting him, and I said I'm going to niche down about two years ago, mm-hmm. I got another client who was starting his own commercial contracting <laughs> business. And I'm like, wait a minute. This is like, is this, you know, I this is where I have to go. But I really wanted to work with contractors, to be honest, because that was my background. The Being in the hardware space, mm-hmm. I worked closely with contractors. But as I got into coaching, what I realized is, and I, I mean no disrespect, but what I realized is as a female, it was kind of hard to tell a male contractor how to be profitable in their business. And so as I 
was faced with that particular challenge, talking to the male aspect of um, business strategies, I said, you know what, maybe I can do a branch off, meaning interior designers as opposed to the contractors. And so they pretty much do the same thing, just Mm -hmm. a little different, but almost similar. And so that is what caused me to say, you know what, I think I'm going to focus more on the interior designers as opposed to the contractors. And that's why I choose um, interior designers. What I I, I find really compelling there is you you came face to face with a reality that you had to make a decision on yeah and you acknowledged it and then you acted upon it and that's really cool Mm -hmm. and i i know in my world um i initially focused a lot more with health and wellness professionals prior Mm -hmm. to the pandemic right and then the pandemic happened and a lot of the health and wellness professionals had to kind of shut things down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we were helping out some people who in the accounting world that were surging with PPP and, and we realized we had to switch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when, once we did that, we realized we're actually more aligned with this group mm-hmm. of professionals anyway. Mm-hmm. So that's right. The thing I'm bringing that up for is there's, it's never too late to make adjustments on what you're doing and you've got to really follow what's, what's flowing and working for you. Sometimes on paper, it might look one way, but when you get on the court and you start having conversations, you might see things flow a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Cause I know a lot of people that I've connected with, they, they are so over analyzing to, to try to figure out the right thing that they won't make a decision. Right. And if you don't make a decision and, and at least try it, Mm-hmm. And you can't learn and correct. That's right. That's very true. Hey there, this is Kenny from Growth Amplifiers, here to ensure you get your awesome ideas into action to grow and improve your business and achieve your full potential. Take the first step by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the Start Here button. Take the assessment to get your personalized score. Then select from free resources to learn how to improve your score. Don't wait. Be proactive and take action now by visiting growthamplifiers.com and clicking the start here button. And always keep on amplifying. Now, let's get back to the show. So what are what are the top challenges that you help with interior designers? What are the top things that they they typically struggle with? Well, what I found so far um, as an accountant, especially, I found that they know they're very good about designing a space. I mean, they can make the most beautiful space. But the biggest issue, I think they've, they've, um, p- pricing is a big issue for them. One mm. of their biggest struggles is being able to price their products and services profitably. They know how to do the space. I think most of them just, um, they make, poor decisions because they just don't know. No one has ever showed them, well, this is where you should be. This is what margins you should be at. Um, When I first started, for example, with one of the designers that I worked with um, in my practice, Mm -hmm. um, she was charging a certain amount of markup, but, you know, they always hear this thing about the industry norm. You know, Mm -hmm. they say the industry is not going to do this for you. And after we went through a pricing strategies, I said, let's debunk the industry norm. I want you to try this margin with your next customer. At first, she was really reluctant, to be honest. But she said, Andrew, because you say it to me and I trust you and you've always been honest and tell me the truth, I'm going to try it. And she tried it. And after that, she increased it three to four times more than what I told her. And I'm like, good for you. But sometimes we have to go outside of the industry now, but that is one of the biggest challenges that I found is they don't know whether or not the clients that they go after is going to accept their pricing. And it's all because they're doing it wrong, right? They're more focused on the price as opposed to focusing on the value that they're providing and what that customer is going to get. Mm-hmm. And so once they can establish the value, what they're going to do for that customer, then the price is a no brainer. That's the thing is people tend to think 
It's, it's, it's so counterintuitive. We tend to think, oh, if we need to compete and other people have lower prices, we, we must lower prices. Mm-hmm. But it, it actually works against you. That's right. It does. Because mm-hmm. people will th- see the value of your service being worth less, not worthless, but mm-hmm. worth less because you've just priced it less. Yes. Mm-hmm. So if, if you were investing in um, a roof, Mm-hmm. Would you want the thousand dollar roof? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, uh, <laughs> I'm good. No, thank you. Because it, it sounds like it's it's worth less. Yeah, probably worthless at a thousand dollars. Honestly, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. like it's good. Just don't get yeah. it wet, and it's, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you charge a premium, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then people are looking at it, and in comparison to everyone else, and they're like, it's actually more than everyone else. Now, not everyone's going to run to that, but some people will look at it and say, it, well, it's it's bound to be better. This is the, right. this is the top. Mm-hmm. So w- would you rather attract the people that are looking for the discount and the deal mm-hmm. or the one who are willing and want the premium, right? Right. That's right. So That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad to hear that you're helping these interior designers get that clarity. Mm-hmm. Because it, again, we're all genius in our own worlds where we've devoted ourselves to grow, right. but we can't we can't do everything. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. So, so curious if, if people want to learn more about you and your business, um, where could they go and, and what could they do? To learn more about me, you can visit my website at www.profitfirstbookkeepingcoach.com. And if you go to that website, there's a nice little calculator, a downloadable calculator that you can download that's going to help you to manage your money accurately. Um, And also, I have a Facebook group called Launchpad for Interior Designers on Facebook, where I give you weekly tips and trainings each week. That is super cool. And are there any types or sizes of interior designers that you you work with, or is that open to, you know, different different sizes? Well, at the moment, I only work with anyone from one to a million dollars in revenue, right? So if you're just starting out, then you are the perfect person because we can get that pumpkin growing pretty fast. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I love I love the fact that you you have that focus. You're helping the niche. You're, you're cultivating transformation. Mm-hmm. We're going to switch focus just a little bit. Now we're going to the advisors picks section, mm-hmm. and we're talking about um, just a couple things that you might have found helpful on your journey. Is there a book um, that you've that you like that you think other people might find helpful on their journey that are looking to grow? Well. Honestly, now see, that's a hard question because there's so many books, right? right? <laughs> and I, um, there's so many books, but to be honest, and not just because I'm a pop, pumpkin plant, I really, really um, like the pumpkin plants book. I love Profit First, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the pumpkin plant just goes into a little bit more details when it comes to finding those ideal clients. It also touches profit first as well in that book at the end, I think, of that book. I must say it's it's really a hidden gem if you're if you're tuning in. I I saw Profit First, I read it, I thought it was pretty good. But um when I saw a pumpkin plan, I, I was like, I don't know the pumpkin. It didn't call me in just the name of it yeah. and the look of it. I'm like, I don't know mm-hmm. if I need a pumpkin plan or not. But eventually I became a Mike McCallowitz fan. And so I'm like, I'll check it out. And I'm mm-hmm. glad I did because it, it really is one of the best uh, yeah. books, in my opinion. And mm-hmm. it's practical, mm-hmm. um, insightful, and paradigm shifting. So if you're looking for a good read or listen, I listened to the audiobook. I thought it was really valuable. Mm-hmm. That's a great one. Don't underestimate it. If you're not really into the pumpkin spice, it's it's really not about pumpkins. It's about business strategy. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's true. And the thing is, though, if you're looking for, if you don't want to listen and you don't want to read, there's the video book on that. It is amazing. Oh, wow. Yes, 25 minutes, read the whole thing, just through video. It's really cool. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Uh, So another advisor's pick, what is an event or a channel or something that you get inspired by? 
it from in the business world. It could be an event, it could be a podcast, a channel, or something that inspires you, gives you energy and insights. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike, but one of the other ones is um, Donald Miller. Um, mm -hmm. Donald Miller, um, the Business Made Simple podcast. I really, really enjoy the podcast because he has practical tips to help mm -hmm. anybody who's trying to actually start the business from the ground up. He has some really interesting tips about your vision, your mission. Um, so I pretty much, if you want to be a coach, he has the best program that I've found for those who are aspiring to be coaches and just starting out. So he's helping coaches really start up because he's actually giving you the framework to get started. You don't need to do anything except pay him the fee and, and everything is there for you. And, and what's amazing is the support that they give you. I mean, they're really trying to get um, coaches to, to be successful as a coach. And that was really why I joined that program. Awesome. I love it. Super cool. Big fan. I've got the book on my shelf. Mm -hmm. And then the last advisor's pick. Now, I know you've got a lot of amplifiers in your world. Yep. Um, but if you could highlight maybe a peer or somebody that, that's inspired you that that potentially could be even a good guest on the show. Just someone that comes to mind that maybe he's doing something cool. Maybe they've helped you out. Just anyone you like to toot the horn for. All right. Who can I? Oh, I know. Um, Todd Howard. Todd Howard. He is the grow a niche niche coach. Um, Todd Howard. He has been the person that's been instrumental in helping me niche down. Hmm. Um, he has done this niching process. I've never seen it done the way that he's done it. You know, everybody focuses on the market first. Like, okay, my target is interior designers. Let's let's focus there. That's not the way he does it. He does it opposite to that, right? He goes through the customer journey first. He helps you to establish what your unique abilities are and how you address your clients in order for you to stand out. So he's the perfect person to be on your podcast, I would say. Oh, super cool. Well, I appreciate that. And I'm sure he'll appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. And um, the last thing we do, it's a tradition on these interviews uh, is, well, actually before we do that, is there anything else that you'd like to promote or share with the audience? Um, in regards to your website or something else that they might want to know about you or, or the things that you're doing? Well, one thing I'd like to share is what makes me different from everybody else. As a coach, a I believe in giving you a focus plan mm -hmm. and I believe in holding your hand and helping you by holding you accountable to get results. So I'm just not someone who's going to just give you, I'm going to give you some videos to watch, but it's not just the videos. I'm going to help you through it, hold your hand, give you the focus plan and make sure that you get the results that you need. Love it. <laughs> Andrea, you've been amazing. You're shining that light and inspiring others to do the same. Now, the traditional way that we end these podcasts are if you could share something that you've learned on your journey, that might be helpful for someone on theirs. It doesn't have to be related to your industry, but it can be. What is something that you'd care to share? Okay, what's helped me on my journey? Uh, I guess a lot of you don't know it, but I used to be a drug enforcement officer. So being a drug enforcement officer, it was about accountability. And I think that's why I'm so strong in that field. I know what it is to be held accountable and also the having your, what do you call it, my your comrades back. And so for me, I think when I get involved with a client, it is, we become family. Um, I'm not a cheerleader, so to speak, by no means, because <laughs> I'm just the truth teller. I'm that little kid that your mother says, this is what I want you to do, Andrea, and I'm going to do it. That's just me, and I'm still that way today. Um, and so that is has really helped I, that I am today. Um, I'm that person that's going to tell you the hard truth that you need to hear because that is how I know, that's the only way I know how to do it. Um, and so if you're looking for that person to help you along your journey, keep you accountable to get results, 
that's me. <laughs> Super cool. Thank you so much, Amplifiers. Make sure that you take something that you've learned from the day, apply it. It's not the knowledge cultivates transformation, it's action. It's the attitude and action to take it to the next level. So keep on amplifying and catch you on the next show. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.